But Lord, you've allowed for us to gather here once again on this corner. Thank you, Lord. To lift up your name, to magnify you, to glorify you. We pray, Heavenly Father, for each person here under the sound of my voice, for those who have a desire to be here but were unable, for those who are traveling up and down dangerous highways and byways, for those who are having to be at other places and other locations this morning. Lord, we pray that you will bless, yes, Lord. protect, and provide as you have always done. For Lord, you've been good to us. And Lord, we want to give you praise, glory, and honor in this place. Forgive us, Lord. We've sinned. We've done wrong. And we pray, Lord, that you will draw us ever nearer and closer to you. When we're battling with Satan, we know we've won the victory. But Lord, in the midst of those times reassure us that you're walking with us through the valley and the shadow of death reassure us lord that in the midst of those battles that we will be victorious and lord we'll give you the praise the glory and the honor thank you lord now lord as we proclaim your word we pray that what we have worked on is pleasing and acceptable in your sight we pray lord that you would be lifted up magnified and glorified in everything that we do in the name of your darling son jesus christ we pray amen, amen. our sermons will be connected and tied to our church covenant we passed those out to most of you on last sunday and we're going back to our church covenant Amen. and using it as a title and subject this morning. Beautiful. Our scripture text is going to come from Romans chapter 8. We're going to read a lot of it, but we're just going to focus in on a few of those because there is so much found in Romans chapter 8 that we could probably preach on every verse for the next yeah. 30 Sundays. Wow. Reading from King James Version. Mm -hmm. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, yeah. but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, yeah. in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead yeah, yeah. dwell in you, yeah. he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, 
We are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God. Or if you want to shorten it up, let the Spirit lead you. Reading the first part of our Baptist covenant. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. Hold on. The timer is running. As members of the covenant community, we are led by the Spirit to receive the Lord Jesus as our Savior. This is the common ground on which we stand as we enter into this covenant. Erosion of this ground leaves us with no place to stand, for all other ground is sinking sand. If we're not standing on the Lord Jesus Christ, all other ground is sinking sand. We do not place confidence in goodwill towards one another, for this can rise or fall. Nor can we place our faith with political parties or in economic security because these both come and go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friendships can fall apart. Families feud. Business partnerships go sour. But the ground on which we stand in Christ is solid ground. Yeah, yeah. Without this ground, all else will be washed away. Look at Luke 6 46 through 49 Why call ye me Lord Lord and do not the things which I say mm -hmm. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them I will show you to whom he is like. He's like a man who built his house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock and when the flood arose the storm beat against that house but it was not shaken. It could not be moved because it was founded upon a rock, which is Jesus Christ. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built his house upon the earth and against which the stream did beat. And immediately it failed. And the ruin of that house was great. The foundation of the church covenant that Baptists have with each other is Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul says, No other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid who's in Jesus Christ. The church is built on the blood of Jesus. Christ shed his blood for us on the cross. For a covenant to be established in the Bible, there had to be a sacrifice. There had to be a death. Our new covenant established 
with Jesus Christ was established through the sacrificial death of Christ on the cross. The covenant we have with each other in a church is founded upon the cross of Jesus Christ. And as Paul says to the church in Corinth, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This Jesus Christ is the second person of the Trinity. That is why this opening paragraph of the covenant mentions God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Furthermore, the church covenant is based on each of the of us, each of us first individually accepting for ourselves Jesus Christ as our savior. Each one of us has to meet him, accept him and submit to him as Lord of your life. Oh, yes. The only people who can enter into a church covenant in the Baptist church are believers. Those who have been led by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and on the profession of their faith been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The foundation of our church covenant is a personal faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. It's got to be personal. It's got to be you and him, just like Paul on the Damascus Road. It's got to be you and him, just like David was in his relationship with him. It's got to be you, like Daniel, in his relationship with him. It's got to be you and Peter in your relationship with him. Have you ever noticed that there's a difference in a person who has trusted Jesus as their personal savior. Have you noticed that they think different, they act different, they walk and talk different? And the reason is that the Holy Spirit has entered into them because of their relationship with Jesus Christ. At every instant of salvation, the child of God is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, for by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free and have been, been all made to sink into one spirit. When he comes in, he does so to abide with that new believer forever. John 14, 16 through 18, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but you know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. When the spirit of God comes into a life, that life is forever changed. This is the essence of our being made a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he is, she is 
a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It is this life in the spirit that is the focus of this eighth chapter of Romans. Up until now, Paul has been reminding us that in our natural self, we are sinners and that we are under the wrath of God. He has told us that we cannot save ourselves by our goodness or by religious works. He has told us the truth that salvation is the product of God's grace alone. After describing the life of sin, the life of religious works, and the life lived under the law, and after showing us how each of these falls short of being able to save the soul, he turns his attention to the new life in the spirit of God. This whole chapter is all about experiencing new life in the spirit. We're going to look at the first four verses, then we're going to look at the last mm -hmm. verses. But it's a whole bunch in there, in between there, y'all. This verse, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. This verse reminds us that when we are saved, we are saved from the wrath of God. We are saved from that punishment that we deserve. We are saved from it if we submit to his will, if we let him take charge of us, if we let him take charge of our thinking, if we let him take charge of our decision making, if we let him take charge of our will, then he saves us from the punishment that we deserve. No longer are we lost sinners living under his condemnation and doomed to an eternity in hell. John 3 and 36 says, He that believes on the Son hath everlasting life, and that believers not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. In Ephesians it goes like this, Ephesians 2, 1 through 3, As for you, you were dead in your trespasses, transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient all of us also lived among them at one time gratifying the cravings of our flesh but because of his great love for us God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that we have been saved. Those who are in Christ, Jesus is the one who makes all the difference. You can be in church and die lost. You can dress up like 
a church person. You can wear, sisters, I ain't picking on nobody, them big hats. You can have all the correct vocabulary. Praise the Lord. God is good all the time and we can say all of that but if the spirit has not convicted us of our sins then we just a member you're a member you gave the preacher your hand you came down but you didn't give your heart to God you gonna be lost you can be a good neighbor and die lost but when you're in Jesus you're saved to the uttermost and you're fully secured from an eternity in hell John 10 and 28 says, And I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Jesus is the only refuge for the soul of man. He is the only safe harbor where we can find salvation, forgiveness, hope, and everlasting life. We've been delivered from the sentence of sin. We are delivered from the slavery of sin. For the law, verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. The law sinner is under the control of three masters. He's under control of the flesh. He's under control of the world, and he's under the control of the devil. And any person who has never trusted Jesus as his Savior is not control, not in control of his own life. But he's being controlled by the world. He's being controlled by the devil. He's being controlled by his flesh. Some lost sinners are led into lives of unspeakable wickedness and evil. Others are church members, good and upstanding citizens, yet they are lost and headed to the same mm, uncomfortable, miserable death even though they may be here Sunday after Sunday, week after week. They may be those who go out and give to the needy. They may be those who go out and help those who are without. They may have good intentions and good desires, but if they haven't submitted to him, You're lost. When Jesus comes into your life, he changes everything. Now in him and by the power of his spirit, we're given the ability to stand against the world. We're given the ability to stand against Satan. We're given the ability to stand against the flesh. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the flesh, and the world. We are delivered 
from the sentence of sin, the slavery of sin, and the sickness of sin. Let's go down to verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Daddy. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if we are children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may also glorified together according to Paul when we believe we became the sons of God that is where we were removed from the family of Adam we were transplanted into the family of of God we are literally his children 1 John 3 1 through 3 see what great love the father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God that it, and that is what we are the reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him dear friends now hallelujah we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. John's verses tell us that we are his children now if we did at the beginning of Romans chapter 8 mm -hmm. then we are his children in these verses if we have submitted to him and accepted him as our Lord and Savior then we are part of the family if we have acknowledged that he is our Savior and our Lord, and in our hearts, we know that we've encountered him and been changed. Our desires are different, our wants are different, our thinking is different. Mm. Church breakups, church fallouts. Is it about the word or is it about my will and my way? I can't stand the sight of her. I can't sit in the same section as her. I can't do anything with them. Is it God's will? Is it God's spirit talking to you or is it your spirit talking to you? It says as men are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God. If you are led by the spirit then you will do things like the spirit tells us to do. You will handle it like the tells us to do. What this means is that those who are in the family begin to act like the family. Carson has some stuff like his mama. A quick wit. A sharp tongue that can be humorous at times and slashing and dashing you at times. 
Carson has some attributes like his father. We haven't treated them like they wasn't ours. We adopted them. We brought them into the household, and we started treating them like they was born in the house with us. They've taken on some of our characteristics. They're doing some stuff like we and her. They're acting and saying and doing things similar to what their father and mother do. So all us up in here ought to be acting like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, lights. <laughs> there are certain people in the church who sound and act like their parents. I didn't, I didn't know none of y'all parents, so I don't know if y'all do or not you phrase things like your parents you even sound mm -hmm. sister white like your parents we all develop traits that are similar to the family to which we belong and the same ought to hold true in the life of the believer if a person is saved they will develop some traits that are like the father's family. The primary trait being that we will be led by the spirit of God. You see, every child of God has, you do have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. Romans 8 and 9 says, but if you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. If the spirit is in residence, he will make his presence known. He will change the life that he inhabits. God's children are led by the spirit yeah. Yeah. does the spirit of God ever lead you to do what you don't want to do does the spirit of God ever move you to do something that is out of the ordinary for you does the Spirit of God move you to say or respond in a way that it, some people will say, wait, that don't even sound like him. Who is that? Hmm. Galatians 5 and 22. But the spirit of the truth is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, we also ought to walk in the spirit. Yeah. Verse 15. We have a new father. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father verse 15 tells us that when we've been delivered from the bondage of fear yeah. that we've been adopted into the family of God and now we have new ways new actions new things that we're going to be doing in Roman society Adopted children are given more privileges and rights than in our society. Sometimes adopted children in our society are ostracized, 
pushed to the side, not given much. But in Rome, things were vastly different. The picture of adoption is a beautiful picture of what God does for the Christian. The father had absolute authority over his children. He could do whatever he wanted to do if he adopted one of them into his family. He could work them like a slave. He could sell them. And if he wished, he could pronounce a death penalty on them. Their adoption was a serious matter. Yet it was a common practice to ensure that a family would not become extinct by having no male children. And when a child was adopted, three legal steps were taken. The adopted son was adopted permanently. He could not be adopted today and disinherited tomorrow. He became a son of the father forever. He was eternally secure as a son. Secondly, the adopted son immediately had all the rights of a legitimate son in the new family. And thirdly, the adopted son completely lost all rights in his own family. The adopted son was looked upon as a new person so new that all debts and obligations connected with his former family were canceled out and abolished as if they never existed. That's what we got. When we came to Jesus, we were taken out of Adam and adopted into Jesus. We have a new father. We have a new freedom. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For if you receive not the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. These verses tell us that as children of God, we've been delivered from the power and the influence of the flesh. We are no longer led by Satan and the whims of the flesh. Now we are led by the Spirit of God. Not only have we been delivered from our old leadership, we've been delivered from the life of fear that we used to live while we were in our old family. And now in Jesus, we are brought into a close relationship with our new heavenly father. A relationship so close that we can call him daddy. Daddy, I need you to come see about me. Daddy, daddy, my wife needs you to come see about her. Daddy, will you go by and see about my sister? Daddy, will you go by and see about my brother? Daddy, will you go by and see about my children? Yes. Because we have yes. this relationship with him, it does not stop. He gonna look out for us all the time. Yeah. And we have the blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Yes. We have the blessed assurance that he's gone away to a place to prepare for you and for me. Yes. He's gone away to a place to prepare a mansion for you and for me. He's gone to a place where there's no more sickness, no more pain, no more suffering, and we all have a right to any of the things that he possesses. The cattle of a thousand hills belong to him, and everything under those hills belong to him, and all the things of this world belong to him, and he's gone back there yeah. 
to get ready for your arrival. He's gone back there to prepare a place for you and for me. And one day we're going to meet him on that glory road and he'll say, well done, well done, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done, you've been faithful over a few things. Come on home and be with me in glory. Charles Stanley tells the story of a seminary professor that he had on evangelism. Charles Stanley tells the story of how this professor prepared a test for his students uh -huh. in this evangelism class. And they would all show up for the test. Yeah. And he would tell them, read all of it before you get started. He would tell them, and on the test, it was also printed, read all the way through until you get to the end before you start to answer the questions. Mm -hmm. They would start reading, and they would begin to look around at each other, and they would say, we ain't ready for this. This is too much. This is, we, we haven't studied this. We haven't prepared for this. Some would keep on reading. Some started trying to answer every question all the way through. Stanley read to the end of the test. And at the end of the test, it said you have a choice. You can sign your name, put the date on it, and get an A. Or you can answer all the questions, and you will get whatever grade that you make. Stanley and a few others signed the test, put their name on it, and got an A. Others sat there for two hours trying to answer every question, trying to be studious and go through the test. Later, Stanley asked his professor, why did you give us a test like this? Why did you give us a test with all of this information and then have us sign it and get an A. What are the results that you've gotten from other students? He told him, that's God's grace. You don't deserve it, but if you just follow the directions, you'll get an A. If you follow the directions in Romans chapter 8, you'll get an A. But you can be like one man who tried to answer every question succeeded in answering the questions and got a C plus. Or you can be like the one who accepted God's grace yes. and moved on to accepting what God had provided for them. God has done all of the work. All we have to do is just accept God's grace and what he has done for us. There may be one here this morning. You haven't accepted what God is offering you. There may be someone here this morning who's struggling with this matter of the assurance that God is providing for each and every one who would believe. For God so loved the world yeah, yeah, yeah. that he gave his only you, begotten God. son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but you can have everlasting life. There may be someone here this morning who's dealing with a need in your life. Jesus. Why not bring that need to the one who's able to to handle whatever it is that you're going through. Some may just want to come before the Lord and thank him for adopting them into the family. We are a blessed people. We are a blessed people, and we need to be grateful. Whatever the need might be this morning, you may come at this time. You may come at this time.
you may come unto him and submit your heart and your life to the master. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise for it was grace that brought my liberty I'll never know just why he came to love me so he loved beyond all of my faults and saw my need amazing grace shall always be my song of praise for it was grace that brought my liberty I'll never know just why he came to love me so he loved beyond all of my faults and he saw my knees I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looks beyond. We've done as the Lord has commanded. And there will always be room in my Father's kingdom. This time we prepare to receive our.